All right, this is the NFL recap after week number 11. I am actually at my in-laws. We had to make sure the show got done. Chris is on vacation. I'm rolling solo today. I wanted to make sure we got our recaps in anyway. So I'm knocking it out. No microphone, no nothing. I'm in the back of a friggin' minivan. And I'm making sure that we've got our data out to you guys so that you know what we're thinking about the NFL season this year. Don't want to miss a week. Let's jump right into it. Note number one, the Rams and the Chiefs. 54-51, to the Rams win on Monday Night Football. Awesome primetime game. Great to have a game this exciting in primetime. It's, it's probably the best game that ESPN has had on from the NFL maybe ever. I'm sure the ratings are through the roof. I'm recording this on Tuesday night, so the ratings have not come back on this yet, but I'm positive that it was watched basically by everybody. It was enthralling. It was great. Uh, there is mixed reaction. I'm a defensive guy. I like to watch good defenses. None of that was good defensive play. Okay, there were there were times where defenses got turnovers. They were able to score, you know, stuff like that. But nobody could get a stop when they needed to. It was just ridiculous. Um, there there is something to say about seeing a good offensive display, right? These are two really well coached teams that understand how to play offense and how to make things work. But neither of them could play defense, so. You know, six to three games can be boring or they can be really fun. 54 to 51 games are always going to be really exciting. I'll jump with this. I, I like it. I don't want every game to be like this because at that point you get a little desensitized to it. You don't want that. But this was uh, this was a lot of fun. Two really good teams, two really good quarterbacks, two great coaches. A lot of fun to see. I think they're about even. Uh, if they were to play this game ten times, I think each team would win five of them. So you can't get much better than that. Uh, number two, the Bears 25, the Vikings 20. Do not let this score mislead you. The Bears dominated this football game. Their defense is lights out. Wonderful football team. The Bears are 7-3. and three. They lead the NFC North now by two, two and a half games. Um, I don't know that, that the Vikings or the Packers, or and especially not the Lions, Nobody's going to be able to catch them in this division. Unless something crazy happens, Trubisky may not get to play in the next game. We'll see what's up with his shoulder. Even still, they're not winning with offense. This defense is outstanding. So Thanksgiving Day, make sure you tune in, watch this team play. They are some kind of fun with Khalil Mack, Roquan Smith, that whole bunch. Eddie Jackson is a ball hawk. Whew, lots of fun there. Number three, the Seahawks 27, the Packers 24. This is all the way back on Thursday Night Football. Russell Wilson coming through in the clutch. Aaron Rodgers. Look, it, part of you can say that Aaron Rodgers should be able to win ball games like this. Quarterbacks make the team, etc. Mike McCarthy is a disaster. He cannot make good decisions for whatever reason. And it's been like that for a couple of years now. Maybe longer than that. Uh, they find ways to blow games that I just cannot believe. Blows my mind. Um, I would imagine McCarthy is is gone at the end of this year. We'll see what happens, but if you're not winning with uh, what many deem is the best quarterback in the entire NFL, there's something wrong there. Yes, it might be talent, but talent can be worked around. I mean, look at what the Patriots do every year. They just find guys off the scrap heap. You know, it, it is what it is. Uh, note number four, the Cowboys 22, the Falcons 19. I did not see this coming. After the Falcons got the win in Philadelphia, sorry, the Cowboys, after the Cowboys got the win in Philadelphia, I really thought they would come back to earth, especially after, after the Falcons went up to Cleveland and, and took one on the chin. I thought that the Falcons would bounce back. This Falcons team is not very good. The Cowboys are now 5-5. Five and five. They have got a matchup with the Redskins, who just lost uh, Alex Smith, and we'll get to them here in a minute. But they got a game for the lead in the NFC East. I cannot believe it. it I, I, they've gotten back to feeding Zeke the ball, so that makes a little bit of sense. But good gracious, I'm just, I'm, I'm confused. Um, 
Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but the Cowboys, I mean, they might be a decent football team. We'll see. The Lions 20, the Panthers 19. The Panthers are 6-0 and at home. Sorry, 5-0 and at home and 1-4 and on the road. Um, I don't know what to make of this Panthers team. I thought they'd come out hungry after being absolutely demolished in Pittsburgh. Uh, did not happen. Did not happen at all. The Lions, it's not a good thing when you lose Carrion Johnson. He had become a workhorse for this team. Don't know how severe the injury is. We'll have to keep tabs on that and see what happens. But this Lions team without Carrion Johnson, I don't think is very good. I mean, I, I don't know that they're very good with him. But uh, even still, not a good thing if you're going to lose uh, Carrion Johnson. But a good win for the Lions at home. They uh, they needed this one badly. They uh, they were coming off a bad losing streak. Just in time to, uh, just in time to, they get a win right before the Bears come to town for Thanksgiving. So we'll see. Number six, the Texans 23, the Redskins 21. J.J. Watt and the boys take down Alex Smith. He broken tibia, broken fibula. Uh, 33 years to the day that Joe Theismann went down. This could be a career ender for Alex Smith. Not a good thing. You hate to see that for anybody, especially for a guy that, that was playing pretty well, that was leading the NFC East. Uh, I don't know what the Redskins are going to do now with Colt McCoy and now his backup, Mark Sanchez, who they just picked up. No idea what to what to make of this Redskins team. And the Texans just find ways to win. The defense is playing well. And I know that's the most cliche thing to say in the world, but they've won seven straight games, and all of them feel like if one play had gone the opposite direction, they would lose the game. They have not dominated anybody, but good gracious. Uh... Number seven, the Steelers 20 and the Jaguars 16. The Jags were up 16 to nothing with a touch over two minutes left in the third quarter. And the Steelers went to work and were able to come back and win this football game in the very last seconds. This was just a gut punch, just ripping the hearts out of Jaguar players, fans, coaches. I think Tom Coughlin hates this team. I think he cannot stand this Jaguars team. It, all of these players that talk trash and, and all that, last year they got to the AFC Championship game. They were 10-6 and six in the regular season. What had you really done to enable you to talk trash? And not just to the Steelers, but just across the board, right? Everybody talked about them having such a good defense. Once you start talking trash, everybody is gunning for you they really should have kept their mouth shut and just gone out and played football. This is not a good football team right now. I could see them getting a few wins down the road because they have played a really tough schedule. But good gracious, that was uh, that was rough to watch if you were a Jags fan. Number eight, the Colts 38, the Titans 10. I really should not have been surprised by this. Uh, Marcus Mariota goes out with an injury. He re-aggravated re his uh, elbow injury from earlier in the season. Not a good thing. He uh, he may not be playing against the Texans this coming Monday, but man, they just absolutely wore out the Titans. Andrew Luck is undefeated against the Titans in his career. That is crazy to think about. Like he has completely owned this team. Uh, they are riding a wave right now. They are absolutely on fire. Andrew Luck, when he is healthy top five quarterback in the NFL, and it's not even close. He makes everybody around him better. This team, without Andrew Luck, we saw him last year with Jacoby Brissett. They're about a three or four win football team without Andrew Luck. With Andrew Luck, possibly playoffs? I mean, they could end up winning this division. They're only two games back of the Texans, and they still have to play them. So we'll see what happens. They might need a little bit of help, but if they stay on a streak like this, whew, Number nine, the Ravens, 24, the Bengals, 21, Lamar Jackson. I'll go on and tell you, I don't trust him, but for one game, he looked all right. He was 13 out of 19 passing, 150 yards. He did have one pick, no touchdowns, 27 carries for 117 yards. If you are an NFL quarterback, you are not going to be able to run like that and survive in the NFL. Like, I, I don't see how he will be able to stay as their quarterback. They need Flacco back. Uh, but they did get a good win over the Bengals, who are 
man, they are going on a downhill slide. Something fierce right now. Uh, the Bengals just cannot buy one right now. Number 10, the Saints. Good gracious. The Saints 48, the Eagles 7. Drew Brees is playing the quarterback position just about perfect. I don't know that anybody could play the position better than he is at the age of 39 right now. He was 22 out of 30 for 363 yards and four touchdowns. Mark Ingram busted 100 yards, went for a couple of touchdowns. This team is unstoppable right now. They put 48 on the Eagles. They put 51 on the Bengals last week. I mean, I, I don't know who's slowing this team down right now. They're on a uh, nine-game, ten-game winning streak. Nine game, I don't know. Either way, it's a whole lot of games in a row, and they're looking better each week, which is just absurd. And then finally, we're going to close out the Broncos 23, the Chargers 22. The Chargers led this thing 19-7 to in the third quarter, and a Phillip Rivers interception led to a comeback. It was returned back down to the Denver 8. Broncos end up punching it in. After that, the Bronco, they, uh, the Chargers have to go and, uh, and punt immediately. The Broncos come right back down the field. They take the lead. The Chargers drive and kick a field goal, and then they give up another drive, and they lose the game. They are now 7-3. and three. I don't think it's anything to panic about yet, but this is one that you really, really wanted at home. The Broncos are not a good football team. Can't be losing games like this, especially if you want to keep pace, uh, because you know that you're not going to catch the Chiefs in that division. You need a wild card. You need the best wild card possible. Whew. All right, that is going to wrap up our NFL recap for this week. I know it was a short one, but hell, I'm in the back of a van talking with no microphone. It is what it is. Hopefully you guys appreciate it. We will be back in studio next week. Chris will be off vacation. I will not be at my in-laws. Things will be good. Thanks for checking out the show. Hit subscribe if you're on YouTube. We'll see you guys next week.